Hello everybody, my name is Richard and we have news that the Tesla Model 3 Performance has been released. You can now order one in the UK. Have I ordered one? Yes, I have. Of course I have. Uh, had to be done really. I got the first Model 3 Performance and it came to the UK after a long wait. That was back in 2019. Had every version since and it's my duty, isn't it, to order the new one. So I have now ordered it. In this video, I'll tell you a little bit about it. If you haven't had a chance to see some of the clippings and the releases so far about the new Model 3 Performance, I'll tell you a bit about it. But firstly, oh my God, so easy to order. I've already got the Tesla wrap. I've already got Teslas. Went on the app, referred myself, ordered a new car, Model 3 Performance. Yep, there it is. Job done. Apple payment for a £200 deposit. That was it. <laughs> Literally took about two minutes to order a brand new car. Uh, and they're quoting delivery estimated May, June. So like could be within about four to six weeks. That means it's probably on a boat already, doesn't it? So it's probably already left the uh, factory in Shanghai. It would be a China made car and on its way here. So, and it should be in amongst the first batch of cars available in, in Europe and possibly even globally. Um, we'll see if they get released early in other countries, but nonetheless, it should be one of the very first in the UK. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about the performance, the performance car, I'll tell you about some of the changes in this video. Uh, but firstly, what did I order? I ordered a white one with a black interior. I want to keep it as cheap as possible. Uh, so it's under £60,000 and they put it at 59999 Um and white's the easiest colour to look after. My last Model 3 was uh, the black Highland and it uh, looks good in black, but of course you're forever cleaning it. It does tend to show bits and pieces. And because this is a performance car, I do intend to take this car to a track and give it some life to go, go on the drag strip, maybe with Carwell doing some film with them. So this car, if it's white, it's going to be easier to look after. It won't show little stone chips and it just makes it the cheapest. If I ordered, um, like, I like the red, it looks nice, but it's a couple of grand extra and then really you need to get the PPF paint protection film on red, so that's easily another couple of grand on top of that, it becomes a very expensive paint option. Uh, and I like the way the white, you can just give it a quick wash, doesn't show the swells, doesn't show the stone chips, very practical, and it keeps the price under 60,000 pounds. Got to admit, I was slightly tempted by the uh, Hyundai Ionic 5N because that looks like quite a weapon. We saw one of those at the Electric Everything show up in London, and um, that was interesting. That's priced at £65,000, so Tesla bring this car in under. Now, if you're watching this video and you're tempted or have ordered an Ionic 5N, let me know. It'd be good to do some side-by-side -side videos on that, wouldn't it, really? Um, and the Ionic 5N is interesting because it's got like gear changes and blips and in, in, in throttle, pretend gear changes and engine noises. Uh, the test is just going to be a silent bullet. So how fast is it? It is 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds with a rollout like Tesla always quotes and the real world probably just over three seconds. So it's a little bit faster than the previous Tesla Model 3 performances. In terms of brake horsepower, it's a bit unknown. Basically, it sounds like the front motor is the same, but the rear motor is the new motor, and that is more powerful. On Tesla's website at the moment, it says 460 horsepower. I've seen other sources saying over 500 horsepower. What is the brake horsepower? No one will ever really know by the sound of it, uh, but nonetheless, it's faster. Top speed, 163 miles per hour. It's only 50 kilograms heavier than the dual motor long range. Um, so there's not too much extra weight or anything, even though it has bigger brakes and some other bits and pieces. So what are those other bits and pieces? Well, let's run through the differences. Again, starting with the performance side of things, because that's interesting uh, in terms of, is it just faster? No, it's not. They've got different bushes. They've got different anti-roll bars. Um, adaptive damping is really good to see as well. So it looks like you've got a sport damping mode and a standard kind of damping mode, more comfortable for the road. And that's great. I wanted to see that for a long time. So that was one of the things that if it didn't have that, I wouldn't have been as interested to order one. But it does, so it'd be really interesting. It looks like they've worked quite hard on suspension. Again, it's like the Ionic 5N. They make a, uh, you know, a, a big deal that they've done a lot to the car. It's not just faster, but they've got extra welds in the chassis and all this kind of stuff. And it looks like Tesla have been putting through a pretty similar amount of work to make sure the suspension really lives up to the performance name. It was interesting with the old Model 3 performance because it was always quite firm and hard on the road. But actually, when you pushed it on track, and I did go on track with a few, it was then actually a bit, sort of comes apart a little bit. You get a faster circuit like in the UK, Thruxton, and you're traveling around church at the back, 140 miles an hour, it actually was kind of quite wobbly. So a car that's firm on the road became quite wobbly and track. 
Actually, I'd be interested to see how this then performs. So I'd be really keen to get it on track and, and give it a go. And speaking of track, it's got V3 track mode now. It is obviously a bit lowered compared to the standard long range. It's got bigger brakes. It's got bigger calipers, performance brake pads. So the V3 track mode is going to be interesting as well. And it looks like you've got, like before a track mode, you can put all the power to the rear or to the front and stability on or off or anywhere in between a number of settings. It'd be interesting to see how much of that you can change for just road driving because before you'd have to stop the car, engage track mode before you could really sort of change with the balance of the car. Will they give us some option to just switch some balance or knock the traction back a little bit while you're just driving this car in its normal road mode? It'd be interesting to see that. We'll see, we'll see. I wanna see it though. <laughs> and then we've got uh, the interior, new seats. Uh, so that was again, big big issue before when you're trying to drive firmly or track even a Model 3 performance is that the seats have no real side support, long way behind. The Model 3 Highland has got better seats and made videos and that, so do check out our review videos of the Model 3 Highland. Better seats, but still a bit short on the leg, on the base, so I would like to see it's got adjustable thigh support. I've not seen that it has. It's something I would like to see, but certainly these new seats, certainly bigger side bolsters, hold you in place a lot better. Uh, should be heated and vented like the Model 3 long ranges and the standard range even now, they're all vented seats, so that's good. Um, there's some carbon fibre trims around the dashboard as well, so bits of the, the dashboard top is carbon fibre. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it's still a thing, apparently, carbon fibre. And uh, we've then got some other sporty bits, like a new front splitter. So the actual front bumper's different, and it's got a splitter at the bottom, which doesn't show that much. I think, again, buying the white one, I think, will show that better than one of the darker colours. Uh, and then it has a different rear diffuser, rear bumper and valance, and then you've got the spoiler at the back as well, carbon fibre spoiler. Alongside, then some alloys. Now, the alloys are a lightweight forged. Initially, I don't really like the look of the alloys in the performance. What do you think? I don't really look that spectacular, but a couple of things about them. One, they're forged, um, so they should be strong. They should be lightweight. They're different sizes by the look of it. 19 inch wheel on the front with 235 tires. On the back of the car, a 20 inch wheel, bigger diameter with 275 tires. So that's a pretty hefty tire on the back there. Uh, and interestingly, those uh, on the wheel design, you've got these segments which you can apparently unclip. So they're sort of aero segments that fill the gaps between the spokes. You can actually pop them out and possibly run the wheel without them in. Not sure how that's going to look. And um, we're not sure how much that'll affect the range. I'm sure we can do a test and try that out, drive it with and without and see what the difference is. Can make quite a difference. So it would be interesting to see that. So it looks all right. What I would like to have seen was a bit more of a difference between the performance and the standard or long range. Because ultimately, we've got to admit, even for petrol heads like myself, for most people driving around on the road, just a standard range is fine. That's £40,000. So 20000 extra for performance. Well, it looks like A, did quite a lot of work has gone into it. But it's a shame it looks a bit more standard on the outside. Take a BMW M3. It looks a lot more aggressive, wider wheel arches than the standard one. Um, I would like to see a little bit more about that with the new Model 3 performance. Again, let me know in the comments below what you think, because we, you know, with such comments, as we go through this. So, I would like to see a bit more of an overall aggressive look, maybe some slightly more flared arches, some slightly more staggered wheels. Anyway, we'll see. It's a bit of a silent sleeper and it means that you can kind of use the car. It's a bit more subtle as well for using it for business use. You could travel to a client's car park and, and that was a problem with something like the M3 is that it was, it's not very subtle, is it? I used to run a BMW E39 M5 and what I liked about that actually was it did look like a 530DM Sport and you could turn up at a client car park and it didn't really look too showy but it was a bit of a stealth and obviously you could go. I guess you've got to look at the Model 3 performance like that. I guess you've got to also look at it that a car that can do 0 to 16 in three seconds and yet would be very cheap to run. So if you've got one as a company car, or if you're buying one through a business, you get first year capital allowance, company car, very low benefit in kind. And a car that you can cover big miles in. Now we've still got here a 2019 Model 3 performance for four years old. It's covered over 105,000 miles now. We've done a video about that car. How's it holding up? How much have we had to spend on it? How much maintenance is it needed? Well, other than tires, barely anything at all. And if you think that you can run a car that's not to 60 in three seconds, and yet you could do 25, 30, 40,000 miles a year in, and it costs very little to run and very little to maintain, I think that's the thing you've got to appreciate with what the Tesla Model 3 performance is at the end of the day. 
You're not going to do that kind of mileage with an Audi RS4 or BMW M3 competition. I think you'll probably agree. Uh, so that's interesting. It will be interesting to see how the range is different as well because this car is quoting 328 miles of WLTP range compared to the uh, Tesla quote as 390 miles for the long range. So Tesla themselves are admitting well, a sort of 60, 70 mile range difference. Now, the Model 3 long range does not do 390 miles very easily. More like about 300 quite solidly, even about 320 is possible but not 390. So if they're claiming 328 for the performance, I think ultimately we'll see that being a real world range of more like 270, which is really in line with what the current car is. So I probably expect the expectations to be similar to that. Again, if I buy one, pick one up, well, I have bought one now, um, we'll do some tests. Of course, there'll be loads of videos in it. As soon as we get it, we'll put it to hard work. We do plenty of miles. My Model 3 long range Highland 6,000 miles nearly in six weeks. So if I put this one to good work, plus a bit of track stuff, we'll do plenty of videos on it, I'm sure. So make sure you stay subscribed. Let me know in the comments below if you've ordered one. Uh, it'd be interesting to know. Let me know if you haven't ordered one and why you're holding back. That would be interesting to know as well. Uh, and if you've ordered something different or you just don't like it, let me know. It'd be interesting to read all those comments. So that's it for me for now, but there'll be plenty of Model 3 performance new version coming up soon so make sure to stay subscribed thank you for watching